I'm just gonna start off right away just apologizing up front in advance. Not that it matters, honestly. <laughs> Y'all probably don't care. But I already know this video is not going up on Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the reason I know that is because I'm recording it on Saturday and I'm also going to a holiday party tonight in an hour and a half to be exact. <laughs> So that means that I know for a fact that this video will not be edited in time to go up tomorrow. And considering that next Sunday is the Sunday before Christmas, um, this is probably going to end up being a midweek video. Uh, so more than likely this is going up on Wednesday. Um, so happy Wednesday if you're seeing this on the day that I post it. Hello. But honestly, the reason for that is just because like my semester literally just ended um, like this week and I really just needed a few days because it's like over but not really over in like the weirdest ways. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, <laughs> my semester's over and that means it's time for my semester recap. So before I get into anything, hey, hello, my name is Jojo and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome. <laughs> So y'all know how this goes by now. I'll start off with classes, race, culture, and classification. Um, I submitted my final paper for that a couple of nights ago. Overall, I would say that it was a really interesting class. It was an interesting course. Um, I'm still, <laughs> I will say throughout the course, I think the professor who teaches it is very knowledgeable despite the fact that, you know, he is a white man an old white man um, <laughs> he is very like knowledgeable about what he's saying and he teaches the class with a lot of humility which I appreciated um, he does need to work on his tokenism habits of calling out the black people in the class to get their thoughts on things um, he did that a lot throughout the semester, but like never in a way that made me like uncomfortable or like felt like I was being attacked. It was more so just like, like okay, like there would be times where like he would call me out or call out the other black girl in the class to give our thoughts on something. And like in those moments, I could really understand because like it's truly one of those things where like you kind of need a black person's perspective <laughs> um, in order to fully grasp the concept um but overall i think i really i really enjoyed the course um fun fact about the final paper he did not tell us until the week a week and a half before the paper was due that he wanted it to be 15 to 20 pages um apparently he thought he had included that information in the syllabus and he in fact did not so we were all emailing him to ask him how long the paper had to be and he finally realized that he never told us and it wasn't in the syllabus and so he did give us like a little bit of uh flexibility with our deadline but i was like nope i want to get this done i want to get over with so i like sat down one day and like i'd started like drafting up like an outline a few days before but i like couldn't bring myself to fully sit down and commit to it and then finally one day i just woke up really early drank some coffee and was like all right and i just cranked it out um so i got it submitted the day it was due which i was really grateful for um but yeah overall not too bad of a class um clinical externship seminar our last class for that was actually not this week but last week and i presented my case what i had written up of my case i didn't finish it because I'm writing this case up specifically for my externship applications and so I didn't necessarily want to finish writing it too soon because I'm still seeing this patient we're still having sessions on a weekly basis and so I want to wait until like probably right after the new year to finish it because we still have a couple of sessions before then and then I'll finish writing up the case based on the sessions we've had so far um, so I didn't finish it, but I presented what I had and my professor uh, thought it was really good. I did not, but hey, 
I was fully prepared for her to like rip it apart, um, but she didn't, <laughs> so I was very grateful. Um, and she told me that I could send it to her whenever I am finished with it so she can then uh, like give me feedback on it before I have to submit it with my applications. I'm just, as I sit here and I'm talking, y'all ever just be sitting and like you weren't feeling tired before but then you sit and then like a wave of exhaustion hit. That's what just happened. I just got hit with like a wave of exhaustion. Oh, this party might have to miss me. <laughs> um, I just got really tired all of a sudden. Oof. No, but I already did my makeup. Okay, anyway, I gotta refocus. Um, yeah, so she told me, <laughs> she told me I could send it to her uh, when I'm finally finished with it and she'll give me feedback on it before I submit it with my applications. Um, so overall, both of my courses that I was actually taking this semester went really well. Um, I also realized that I have never, like beyond I think my first update video, I did not talk about my independent study whatsoever. And that's because I think I explained that my independent study was just extra time for me to write my dissertation proposal. And so that's what I've been doing with it. That's really it, but I, I guess I should include that here since I haven't mentioned it since that first video. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much it for classes. Uh, the class that I TA for is going well. Um, I think I mentioned that there was like a little bit of drama happening amongst the students, uh, but as a TA, I'm chilling. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna mind my business. Um, oh, I almost forgot update on that little situation that I mentioned in my last video. Um, it's weird to think that I recorded that only a few weeks ago. Um, so the course next semester that is required that was ripped away because they can't find a professor to teach it. They're pretty much just like, yeah, it's out of our hands. Um, and the uh, self-study option that they gave to that one student is apparently only being offered to students who um, are got, are planning to be on an internship next year. And so because I'm not one of those students, that was not allowed to me as an option. The other option was to find uh, another institution that is teaching the course or a similar course and take that. But the way my life and my schedule is set up, um, I don't have time to be commuting to a whole different campus somewhere. And so the third option, which is what I ended up choosing and working out with my uh, DCT, is um, considering that this is the only course that I have left to take before I would have been considered ABD. Um, and for those who don't know, ABD is all but dissertation. And that's basically the designation you get when you have finished all of your coursework, but you still have like uh, your dissertation to finish. And for a lot of the funding opportunities that I plan to apply for next semester, I'm I need to be ABD. So what my DCT agreed to is to write me a letter for all of those funding applications that I plan on <laughs> completing. Um, basically saying that I technically am ABD or would have been ABD, but this matter is like out of my hands. It's like out of my control. It's an institutional problem and they take full responsibility for it. And he says, my DCT says that that letter should suffice. According to him, this is not at all uncommon. I don't know anywhere where this has happened before. And if it is a common occurrence, that is a problem. <laughs> but he says that this is not at all uncommon. And so the letter from him proclaiming that if it were not for this one absolutely out of my control circumstance, um, I would be ABD. And that should be enough to allow me 
to successfully complete these funding applications. So that's where we're at. And then I will just unfortunately have to take the class next year when, but if it's being offered, um, because my fear in taking this option is that, okay, the letter will suffice for now, but what happens if next year comes around and they still can't find a professor to teach this class? Like then I'm, I'm genuinely screwed. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at. I don't have the energy to fight back anymore. <laughs> that's really what it is. I don't have the energy to fight back. I'm just like, that's the option that was offered. And I was just like, all right, yeah. <laughs> if, if you say that that will work, then sure. That's the resolution that we came to and hopefully everything works out. That's all I can do. Uh, clinical work. So externship's still going well. My externship is pretty chill right now. Like I said, I have externship applications coming up and I plan on completing those. I'm applying to seven sites, um, but I'm only doing this primarily because I keep being reminded by my advisor and other admin um, that it is probably a really good idea for me to try to end up in a hospital or a VA so that I can be more competitive for internship. Um, so that is the only reason why I'm applying because I basically feel like I was pressured into it. Um, but I did ask my supervisor at my current externship if he would or if they would, the directors, all of them, um, would allow me to stay on next year part-time like half time and still continue to see a few of my clients that i'm seeing now because i really want the opportunity to work with a couple patients longer term and i haven't had that opportunity yet and that's like one of the unfortunate parts of my program is that there's really no opportunities to work with someone beyond a few months or even a year and i really want to work with someone for more than just like four five six months so right now i'm toying with the idea of staying at my current externship half time seeing continuing to see a few of my clients beyond you know may and then somehow also managing to hopefully be at a hospital or a va um so that everybody can leave me the hell alone about being competitive for internship because i'm sick of hearing it <laughs> I, I truly feel like PhD programs really get off on making their students as anxious as possible about internship. I'm just, it's like they drill the anxiety of internship into you and I just don't wanna deal with it anymore. Like I'm over it, like I'm sick of hearing about how difficult internship applications are. I'm sick of hearing about how anxiety provoking the interviews are. I'm, I'm tired of hearing about internship year in general. I know I gotta do it. I will think about it when it's time for me to think about it. Stop making me think about it now. <laughs> I got too much other shit on my plate right now to be worrying about internship truthfully like i know i gotta keep it in the back of my mind but y'all keep forcing it to the forefront and i don't like it so can you tell i'm tired i'm just tired uh but anyway yeah so that's that's the plan right now um externship applications are due january 15th i believe so i got about a a, a, a month <laughs> i got a month um to get those done that's about it with clinical work. Other than that, like I said, my externship's pretty chill right now. I feel like I'm doing really well with some patients and I'm struggling a little bit with other patients, um, but that's what supervision's for. I have one patient in particular that I feel like we finally, like I finally found a style of working that also works for him. Um, and I feel like we're finally getting to the meat and potatoes of what I've been trying to get to for the past like month and a half with him um and so that has been really good we have like a really nice back and forth now that's that's uh it feels like we're finally talking about the real stuff that he's been avoiding talking about with me for a while um 
so it's it's been good i i really like it i'm really liking psychoanalytic work i think i said this before um but i really psychoanalysis is vibing with me i like it i found i think like a good happy medium for myself um and i'm liking it and that's part of why i want to continue part-time on this externship is because i don't feel like i'll be able to work in this way really anywhere else um, and I want to really continue to kind of build this skill set that I feel like I'm building at my current placement. Um, anyway, I'm rambling. My clinical work is going great. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's it for that. Research. So, drum roll. I have submitted my journal manuscript. <laughs> I officially submitted it yesterday and i am so happy that i finally got it done it's finally submitted i don't have to worry about it for a few months and yeah <laughs> i'm really really honestly so scared that it's gonna get a desk rejection i feel like i put so much work into it like if it gets a desk rejection i might cry um but I'm not going to fall into my negative thinking space. I'm hoping that the reviewers are really nice to me um, <laughs> and that they don't tear me to bits. But yeah, I finally got it done. I'm very happy that I got it done. It's my first ever journal submission. Um, and we'll see. Um, but other than that, the only other thing I got going on right now is my dissertation proposal. Um, I have now uploaded the second dissertation diary vlog. If you haven't seen that, I will link it. Go watch it if you want to, if you're interested in what my dissertation journey has been looking like so far. I think that's really all I gotta say about that. <laughs> oh, I'm also waiting to, I'm still waiting to hear back, um, from that funding opportunity that I applied for back in November. Um, they said in the application instructions that they would let people know by mid-december um whether they had made it to the final round of consideration or not um it's now mid-december and i still haven't heard anything um so hopefully i should be hearing from them any day now but um yeah that's that's the only other thing that is on the docket apart from like other funding opportunities that i'm going to also be applying for during winter break yeah <laughs> so i think that's everything i had to say i didn't write any notes for this video um i got dressed and was like i still have time so i will just sit down and record i usually write notes for my my semester recaps i didn't write any for this video um so i'm just making sure that i cover everything that i need to cover overall feelings i am exhausted the longer i've been sitting here talking the more mm -hmm. okay i'll pick that up later um <laughs> the longer i've been sitting here talking the more exhausted i've been getting it's also getting dark outside. This party might actually, no, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, I made cookies for the freaking party. I'm gonna go. <laughs> um, I'm tired. This, this semester was so draining in ways I wasn't expecting it to be. And I truly think the reason I feel so much more drained is because I really, really like tried to not let myself collapse this semester like if y'all have been watching y'all know that every semester every year there just always seems to be something that goes wrong and when it does <laughs> i just like unravel at the seams um and i really 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 tried to not have that happen this semester because I just had so much to do regarding my dissertation and 
I felt like that was the priority and that still is the priority. Like, so I'm going into winter break knowing that like, I'm really only gonna give myself like a week off, like a, like seven days of doing absolutely nothing because I'm going home to visit my family. And I'm telling myself that for those seven days that I'm home, I will not do any work. Whether or not I'm going to be able to actually commit to that, I don't know. Um, but that's what I'm telling myself I'm gonna do because once I come back, I have externship applications, I am applying for a fellowship, I am applying for multiple funding opportunities for my dissertation and I still have to see patients and I still have to work on my dissertation proposal. So it's like, I'm not really getting a break. Like I'm giving myself a week and then the minute I get back, it's like nothing, like I just gotta keep going. And so I am so drained because I feel like I have not really had a break since the start of this semester because I have not allowed myself to just stop <laughs> at least for like not an extended period of time like not for like multiple days at a time really and so yeah i'm exhausted i am so sleep deprived my body is crumbling um my neck hurts constantly my back hurts constantly my shoulders are always tense um as we speak right now there's like a pain right here at the base of my neck it's been there all day um and like if i do this so much pain i crack my neck like 10 times a day <laughs> my eating habits um my appetite is so wonky lately it's like one day i have zero appetite and then the next day i want to eat everything that i have in my apartment um and then other days i'm hungry but just don't want food like i'm starving and i know i'm hungry but the thought of eating food makes me nauseous. Uh, the, the toll that the stress of this semester has taken on my body is probably irreversible. So <laughs> that's where I'm at right now. Um, and I still got a whole other semester to go. And then two more years after that. <laughs> it's so funny to think back on like, my like update videos and like recap videos from like first year i haven't gone back to watch them maybe that's something i should do at some point like i should in one of these recap videos go back and watch <laughs> like the corresponding recap video of like me from first year and like laugh at how absolutely just like bright-eyed and bushy-tailed <laughs> I was and now I'm like sick of it all um I was so hopeful and now I'm just I'm so hopeful but like realistically hopeful not like optimistically hopeful if that makes sense I don't know um I just want to be done that's where I'm at so winter break videos I will probably not be posting during the winter break what i will do is i will probably go live at some point after the new year but before the next semester starts i'll probably do one or two lives um so comment down below and let me know if like during those live streams you want me to talk about anything in particular if you have questions that you want me to answer comment those down below so that i can make sure that i get to them and i will post probably on my community tab to let y'all know ahead of time when the live stream is gonna happen. So, yeah. <laughs> also comment down below and let me know how your semester went. Did you have finals? What were your finals? Do you, are you exhausted? Are you happy? Are you just waiting for the end of the year? <laughs> and what are, if you have any, your new year's resolutions? Um, I don't have any. I stopped making those a really long time ago, but I know that some people still do them. So let me know if you have any, because I'm nosy. Uh, anyway, I, I keep rambling. Um, I, I need to stop recording because I need to get ready to go. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. 
especially if you made it all the way to the end. I truly appreciate it. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. As always, like, share, and subscribe, and click that little notification bell so you don't miss my next upload. And I'll see you in my next one. Happy holidays.